been of this experience. We're expecting to Got a short film on this issue, or should we just speak to the issues? Get us. Yeah. Okay. So let's go with the film. Yeah. <coughs> I just um, before we begin this film, really the, the background to this is kind of what I was speaking about before. Oh, sorry, one second. Um, is the fact that there are an increasing number of, of rights at the international, at the national level, and emerging jurisprudence on these issues as well. Um, and there is an increase in awareness among companies, among uh, conservation organizations, that they want to conduct themselves according to these standards. That's fantastic. But, and it's critical that communities are also the drivers of their futures, not just being Again, kind of some kind of trusteeship approach to this. So as lawyers working with communities, we're thinking a lot about what are the kinds of methodologies, what are the kinds of approaches that can lead what we call breaking the, breaking the dichotomy of communities being spoken to or spoken for. How can they speak for themselves, speak according to what we said before, really be able to articulate their life uh, visions, their values, um, uh, aspirations, uh, very technical stuff such as what their land is, on uh, the mapping side of things, um, but speak according to their rights in law, that we heard is so important, um, and when engaging, what's wrong? Good morning. Um, and when engaging with others, do so according to the law, but again, not just the law having to fit themselves into a, someone else's system, but how can they engage in that system whilst retaining the integrity of their systems? Yeah. So I hope that prefaces what uh, what you're about to see. A few hundred kilometers. 
rivers south of the Kerr. The mud highs tend cattle, buffaloes, camels, sheep, and goats in the grasslands of Kutch. Their breeding skills have made the mud and buffalo the backbone of the milk supply system in India's business capital, Mumbai. The foraging habits of the Malhari's animals are essential to the life cycle of many tree species in Kutch and play a vital role in conserving its biodiversity. Across the world, there are innumerable such examples of communities tending animals and living within a landscape that supports and is supported by them. An ecosystem is an intricate web of such mutually sustaining relationships between human communities, animal and plant species, and the broader terrain and climate. Indigenous peoples and local communities are custodians of some of Earth's most precious ecosystems. Where they live for many generations in a particular territory or area, their intimate awareness of these relationships becomes a complex living science, shaped by time and experience to promote the continuance of the system in its totality. It also leads to the emergence of diverse cultures, languages, knowledge systems and beliefs. Deep-rooted relationships with their environment and territories enable many indigenous peoples and communities to sustain current generations without compromising the needs of those in the future. Their roles as ecosystem stewards are only just beginning to be understood and recognized by conservationists and policy makers. Important rights and responsibilities are being enshrined in international and domestic laws. But understanding and realizing these rights and responsibilities in practice can be a challenge. Many communities have their own approaches to governance and development planning that may differ from the government or private sector's approach. When they engage with outsiders, such as government officials or researchers, it may be difficult to communicate across different languages, values, and property systems. We need a diversity of ways of resolving conflicts, and some indigenous traditional ways of resolving conflicts were ways of getting open discussion, but respect. Uh, there are mechanisms to enable you to move toward reasonable outcomes. But uh, in a lot of places, we've taken the rights of, away from people. And so they have no legitimacy. And so the conflict can get violent very fast. External agencies need a way to understand why communities are entitled to certain rights and how to support their local plans and expectations. That's where biocultural community protocols, or BCPs, can play a role. BCP have been developed as an interface tool to help overcome this challenge. They can be used to illustrate communities' identity and stories of origin, customary territories and ways of life, cultural and spiritual values, and environmental governance and decision-making structures. They can help identify current challenges and consolidate community visions 
plans and priorities. Alongside a process of legal empowerment, they also affirm relevant rights and responsibilities under customary, state and international law. What the Biocultural Community Protocol seeks to do is to be able to articulate it, is to be able to tell the story of a particular community and to generate a dialogue that clearly lays out who these people are, where they've come from, and their role in the management of this ecosystem and sustaining the biodiversity of this particular region. And this dialogue essentially is a way for the community to articulate its story and at the same time to be able to engage the existing legal system, to be able to say that we have these rights within the existing legal systems and, we would, and these rights need to be respected. Biocultural community protocols have been used in Kenya and Colombia in response to threats posed by negative development in the region and in South Africa, India and Pakistan to engage proactively with external agencies such as government officials, businesses and researchers. The Raika, Malpari, Pashtun and Samburu communities are using BCPs proactively to advocate for agricultural policy change in South Asia and East Africa. Thus, rather than just responding to destructive developments after the fact, BCPs can serve as a platform for communities to engage with and inform planning processes before decisions are made. In the Kruger to Canyons UNESCO Biosphere region in South Africa, a traditional health practitioner harvests plants to make her remedies. This is a pepper bar uh, for a sore throat. We just take the leaves. We just take the leaves and boil it, just like tea and you gargle. And also for for flu. You can even pharmaceutical companies showing an increasing interest in such traditional formulations, they are gaining greater recognition. But this also threatens to edge out the communities that have developed and maintained these knowledge systems by increasing external demand for limited resources and introducing large-scale commercial harvesting techniques. Now there's a problem of they don't conserve this plant because they just don't understand what is going on. I myself didn't understand why should I plant the marula tree when the marula is there. But later, to me, when I went to school, when I came back, then I realized that this is very important. You get a fruit, you get medication, you get everything, you get oil, you get the creams from one plant. That's why it's important for us to conserve our nature. Because all these plants are going to be finished. Because of what? Because of the development. Today, the traditional health practitioners from Bushbuck Ridge are using their community protocol to negotiate with local cosmetic companies. The community protocol is helping establish mutual understanding of how to ensure sustainable harvesting of plants in accordance with customary laws and secure recognition and fair benefits for the community. Today, community protocols are recognized as binding in international environmental law and also increasingly at the national and state government levels. But their potential to influence broader political and legal processes may require coordinated action at a larger scale. For example, multiple protocols calling for livestock keepers' rights in India could serve as the collective voice of a broader social movement, but still based on unique local context. <laughs> Documenting and consolidating biocultural community protocols and using them as springboards for legal strategies and action plans can be a transformative process. When used within processes of legal empowerment, endogenous development, social mobilization and advocacy, 
protocols can help secure critical rights and responsibilities in support of sustainable ways of life. These processes are not just relevant to indigenous peoples and local communities. As humanity struggles to combat climate change, conserve biodiversity, and provide for a growing population, it is clear that the wisdom and knowledge of indigenous peoples and local communities can teach the rest of the world how to harmonize ecologies with economies as they have done for millennia. So I, I'm not going to, so thanks very much everybody for that. My name is Harry Jonas, welcome. Uh, do, would you like to say who you are, the people who have just arrived? Hello. Man. Yep, as you like. Yeah. Well, in order, maybe. Yeah, okay. you are. Yeah, my name is William Chanta. I come from Malawi, huh. Africa. I work for Center for Environmental Policy and Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Ina. I come from, uh, I'm representing the Arab group for the protection of nature in Jordan, Palestine, Lebanon, and the region. And uh, uh, we work on the advocacy, food security, food sovereignty, especially under conflict zones and war and occupation. Uh, I'm Dan Juan, I'm the Jinnah. Environmental Legal Studies in New York, and I will be one of the workshop organizers for the next panel. So I wanted to see what was what was this panel. I wanted to come the whole day, but I had to be at the members' assembly to vote on some biodiversity questions. So. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Vincent. Vincent, Vincent Gravel. I'm French, but I'm living and working in Ecuador, uh, South America. Uh, and I'm working uh, specifically uh, with uh, coastal communities on participatory management and participatory governance. Okay, great. So, uh, so my name is Harry, Harry Jonas from Natural Justice, and this is Louisa Denier, who for those of you who haven't met her yet, who's actually organizing today. And what happened is because there were just a few of us uh, this morning, we kind of had a bit more of a focused discussion in the first session and then some things have shifted a bit. As a result, I, uh, I don't want to talk too long about this idea, um, but what I wanted to say in this context is that I think this morning, the first session, we were looking at the Conservation Initiative on Human Rights um, proposal by the eight largest or among the eight largest conservation um, organizations in the world who have publicly committed now <coughs> to uphold human rights across all their programs. Um, and in the discussion, uh, that was appreciated. And there was also a suggestion made, uh, certainly by Sutej and by us as well, that what one needs to do as well, and this is reflected in the ongoing program in the CHR, is to empower communities to be able to speak for themselves, not just wait for uh, large organizations or late or wakeful companies to adhere to these new standards, which is a critical aspect, but to have communities, first of all, knowing what the standards are, what the commitments have been made, and to be able to themselves call for exactly those things. And within that space, which has been created, as it were, for communities' voices, <coughs> to be able to step into that and clearly say, according to our human rights and other range of rights, we want to affect our responsibilities to community, our responsibilities to the land, animals, flora, um, in such a way. And that dialogue is the, important, is the important thing. And so Natural Justice has been working on this particular methodology um, 
that you've just seen this film about, and it is a way of trying to pull those different things together. So it's a legal empowerment method, but it's a, it's a way of working with communities around laws uh, to help them speak into this space. I only wanted to speak to two of these slides, and then we can have a bit more of dialogue or other people who come to present can come on. So, my friend, if you just click on to the next one, next one, oh no, I put the wrong one on there. Um, okay, uh, let's see if, I'm sorry about that, I put the wrong one on. Let's might see if, huh? But, um, no, unfortunately not. But we, let me just speak to this. I was going to put a nice image up there which kind of says it all. But this is good. All I want to speak about now... Well, you have it.